By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have some X points magic for you. This is another finals in their monthly meetup. And uh, I'm just looking forward to show this to you. We've got two very classical decks playing against each other. And this is finals number 38, I believe. I've got more finals on the channel. Uh, by the way, there's a whole playlist full of them. I'll put that uh, playlist in the description below if you're interested in that. And uh, like I said, this is X points, just a little refresher. X points means they're playing according to the Atlantic rule set. So that means that you can play with Fallen Empire. That means Mana Burn is real. Um, and that we only play with one Strip Mine. Uh, it also means that there's a points list. So here you can see that points list. You can spend 10 points on uh, cards with points allocated to them. So that makes it a little bit more interesting, of course, when you're brewing your deck. You cannot just put all the power in there and all the restricted cards. No, you got to think, what cards can I put in? How many points? And then you have to make kind of, you know, the perfect mix and hopefully make it all the way to the finals like today's players have. So we've uh, got Nathan playing Urnum Burnham. So red and green, and he's playing against Oliver, and Oliver is playing a blue-white control deck uh, with a lot of flyers. So I guess you could also call this blue-white skies. Now, before I jump into the deck decks, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to mention that, as always, you can also choose to skip this section, go to the matches first, check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games, so click on there. It'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. So if you like what I do and if you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and consider becoming a patron. It already starts for just $1 a month. And for that dollar, you have my eternal gratitude and access to the Timmy Talks Discord and just a lot of fun other stuff. So if you're interested, please take a moment to check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Nathan. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Nathan Urnum Burnham. So that uh, name comes from, of course, the full play set of Urnum Gins and the Burn. We've got four lightning bolts and four chains. No fireballs. Usually these decks also pack some fireballs. We don't see them here. Um, he's going for Berserks. He's going for Giant Groves. And just a lot of low to the ground uh, creatures, right? Like his top end creature is the Urnum Jinn, which is uh, four to cast. But he's got a lot of smaller stuff that he wants to cast before that. So we see, of course, the classical all-star in the red-green decks, Kurt Ape. Kurt Ape, one red to cast for a 1-1, one, one, a creature from Arabian Nights that gets plus one, plus two if you also control a forest. So I remember back in the day in 95 when I started playing and we were all still buying Revised. We couldn't get fourth edition where I was. And Taiga into Kurdape, that was the thing, you know, Taiga, Kurdape, go. That was such a powerful move. So this really reminds me of that era of, uh, of magic. And then, of course, we also see some ramp in the form of Lanawar Elves. And Lanawar Elves can really help you here to kind of get that Urnum Jin on the table early or being able to end play out a creature and attack and have that green mana open for a giant grove or a berserk kind of do do some more stuff, you know, than you could usually do. And this, of course, is a very, very quick deck. So, I mean, Nathan wants the games to go super fast. And his opponent, that is more a control deck, so he wants the games to go slow, take it easy, take the game into mid game. So we really have two different strategies. What I personally always find kind of nerve wracking playing against these type of decks is that combination of Giant Grove and Berserk, right? I mean, let's say you've got your Kurt Ape turn one, which is a two, three, because you're casting with the Taiga. Then turn two, you could attack with that Kurt Ape, put a Giant Grove on it, make it five, put a Berserk on it, and boom, that is 10 trample damage coming your way. So with this deck, it's really easy to quickly get behind on life, you know, if you're playing against this deck. And then, of course, he's got the Lightning Bolts and the Chain Lightnings to finish it off. He doesn't even need a lot of uh, uh, combat damage here. If he can, like, half your life, that's more than enough. And then he can finish it off, usually with the direct damage. So, um, yeah, very, very uh, powerful deck. And um, difficult to play against, but his opponent also plays a very classical and powerful deck. Let's take a look at the deck of Oliver. And here we see the deck of Oliver. So Oliver is playing uh, a blue and white deck. So it's really blue and white is really the control color, isn't it? Because it gives you access to disenchants, to swords, to counter spells. Um, in this case, also to recall. So to get things back from your graveyard. It's just really good. And now that I'm looking at this deck photo, by the way, he sneaked in, he snuck in two red cards. Do you see that there? 
He's got two fireballs in the deck. That is very, very sneaky. Those can be quite good finishers because sometimes the thing with this deck is, you know, um, you don't have any direct damage. So all the damage that you want to do basically is through combat damage. And you can do that, of course, because he's playing four Sarah Angels and three Mahamoti Jins, which is pretty sweet. But then I can understand why you maybe want to add, you know, those two fireballs to kind of finish the job. And when you're looking at this list, this list is really made to play against a quick creature heavy deck like the opponent that Oliver has today. Because look at it, he's playing three mazes of if, right? Three wrath of gods and four swords to plowshare. So he's got a lot of cards to deal with creatures in the early stages of the game. And then later in the game, you know, he can take over with his more powerful creatures. He's got a lot of card draw as well with those three JMD tomes. Also playing an ivory tower, that's even more like cards that work quite well against like early pressure. So I'm liking this combination of Maze of If and Ivory Tower, right? You just you're stalling the board, you're keeping a lot of cards in hand, you're just gaining life. It it I think when I'm looking at this list, I think Oliver is is the favorite. Um of course, the the red green deck is so explosive, you can always lose if there's like an early perfect berserk move, and then you're so far behind you cannot catch up anymore. But like I said, this deck is really made to play against these creature heavy decks. He's got so many answers to creatures. And of course, he also has that counter magic. So if he can get himself into a position where he's kind of taking care of the early creatures with the maces and the swords, then he can keep a, um, a counter spell in hand to, if it happens, counter that vital berserk, for example, and um, kind of win the game from there. So I, I think this is a really good matchup here for, for Oliver. I mean, yes, his deck is slower, but it's not even that much slower because the answers are quite cheap to cast, right? Maze has no casting cost at all. He's got four swords, he's just one white. Um, so I, I think he can really kind of take care of that early pressure in the game and, and then kind of take over. Um, I do like the fact, by the way, that he's playing with a lot of creatures. I think that's cool. It's always like more fun if you kind of have that, you know, play set of Sarah Angels and the three Mahamotis. They're just, you know, they're cool cards to cast. It's, it's just fun to have some combat action. So personally, I really like this over, for example, a kind of more a deckish build where you hardly have any creatures, right? I like this more. But of course, that is that is personal, you know, to each their own. Um, but yeah, it's looking like a very strong deck. Like I said, a very classical uh, white-blue control deck. And it's going to go against Nathan here in the finals of X-Points. And this is the X-Points finals number 38. And uh, just a reminder, they have a monthly meetup. So if you want to join, it's completely free. There's a link to their Facebook group in the description below so you can join. It's a great group of guys and uh, it's a great community as a whole. Okay, um, but yeah, we've looked at both decks, so we are ready. Let's go to the finals of X Point number 38. Game number one, here we go. So on the right side, we've got Nate and he's playing Urnum Burnham. So uh, green and red deck, he's on the play, starting with a forest, passing their turn to Oliver who's on a blue-white control deck, starting here with a soul ring. And uh, we can see that Oliver is tracking the lives over there on his phone. So that's nice. And here we see Argovian Pixies. So a 2-1 creature from uh, Antiquities. There we see a plateau hitting the board. And there's a Chaos Orb. And passing turn. So he's probably going to swing in here. Exactly. There he goes. 2-1 attacker. Ooh, there's a quick sword to plowshares, though. Yeah, this is kind of as to be expected. Uh, because uh, Oliver is playing with uh, four swords to plowshares. Also, Mazes of If and Wrath of Gods. Has a lot of answers to the creatures. Here we see another Argovian Pixies by Nate. He is missing his land drop. So that's um, not great for him. No red mana for him as well. And here we see an island by Oliver. Ooh, he's going to activate the Chaos Orb. I wonder if he's going to go for the land or the creature. Let's see first the flip. Oh, nice flip. Nice technique. Good hit. And he goes for the creature. Argovian Pixies is a goner. Let's see if Nate can put some more pressure on. Tapping a green. Okay, there's a lot of elves. Tapping another green, there's a script sprite, so two creatures back here, he's back on track, ready to attack next turn. Passing the turn here to Oliver, let's see if Oliver has some more answers, maybe a Wrath of God, he could have a nice two for one. Oh, ho, ho, this is even better, Mahamoti Jin, coming early because of that uh, turn one Soul Ring, of course, so a turn four Mahamoti, and this is already very problematic for, uh, for Nathan. 
This is not what you want to see if you're the, uh, the player who wants to play aggressively and has a lot of small creatures attacking you with the sprites, kind of signaling to Oliver that he has a uh, giant growth and a berserk. So I wonder if Oliver's going to block, probably just going to take the damage and uh, drop to 19 here, but we'll just have to wait and see. He's a little bit in the tank. Yep, taking the damage, going to go to 19. What else can Nathan do? Or tapping to green, and there's another Argovian Pixies, number three there. One in the graveyard, one removed from the game, and one on the battlefield. Passing the turn, yeah, that Mahamoti is looking so good against the board of Nathan. That is just amazing. Okay, here's a maze. Again, a really good card for Oliver in this match. Attacking here. I wonder if, if Nathan is now going to play the Berserk on the Moti. If he has it, of course. Does have the Lanover. He could tap that for green. Okay, tapping a green. Yep, there's the Berserk. And I mean, I think for Oliver, this is a win-win. The Berserk is out of the deck of, of Nate. And of course, you've dealt 10 points of damage, which is kind of insane. There's a Jam Day Tome. For Oliver. And now he keeps counter magic open with the two blue. That's kind of what he's uh, signaling here to Nathan. But I think if you're Nathan, you, you don't really have a choice. You just have to play your game and keep trying to cast creatures and turn them sideways. Yep, there he goes, attacking here for three. There's a mace. Now, of course, uh, Nathan is playing with uh, Blood Moons in his deck. Doesn't have red, of course, at this point, but uh, Blood Moon, a really good weapon against all those dual lands and, of course, against the mazes of Oliver. But uh, is he just gonna, if he's just gonna pass, it's really bad. Yeah, just gonna pass. Oh! Four cards in hand. I wonder what they are. Maybe a lot of red cards and Urnums and stuff. He's really not finding uh, the mana that he needs. And this is ideal for Oliver because he's got that Jam Day Tome, so he's drawing twice as many cards. This is exactly what a control player wants to do, right? Draw more cards, keep counter spells up, passing turn. At least Nate is dealing a little bit of damage, attacking again here. There's the Mace on the Argovian Pixies. Two more points here. Oliver dropping to 15. But I mean, this is not enough for Nate. He needs to put more pressure on the board. He needs to find lands here that's vital for him, preferably a red uh, mana. A mountain would be good, a taiga would be good. He will see another volcanic. Yeah, there's a Sarah Angel. Yeah, it was just a matter of time. Using the Jam Day Tome, drawing twice as many cards, of course, you're gonna find something useful. In this case, the Sarah Angel 4-4 Flyer doesn't have to tap when it attacks. Making it even better here on this board. And I wonder if Nate's attacking with his script, uh, script sprites. Yeah, oh, he's going all in. Or not. Yes, he's going all in. So I wonder how you want to wanna block now. I think if you're Oliver, you're, you're kind of worried about maybe a giant growth. Then again, you don't want to lose more life. So I think you kind of have to block here. Of course, when he plays a giant growth, you could choose to play the maze on that creature. So one of the things he could do is block the script sprites, for example, just take three damage. And if then Nate decides to play a giant growth, you can uh, use your maze. So that maze makes it really difficult here for Nathan. Yeah, you can see he's thinking about it. And I was like, oh man, if I play the giant growth, he can respond with the maze. Ugh. Yeah, Maze of If is really tough for this type of decks. And he is going to play the Giant Grove. Now we could use the Maze exactly on the Argovian Pixies, basically throwing away the Grove. Still two damage here for, uh, for Oliver, so he's going to drop to 13. But far, far from ideal here for Nathan. And I mean, I'm tempted to say that, that this is almost Oliver's game already. He's so far ahead right now. It's going to put uh, Nate here on 8 after the attack with the Sarah Angel. It's going to tap some more. Draw a card, of course. Why not? And there's another land in the form of a Plains. Basic Plains hitting the board, passing the turn. I think, I think if you're Nate, like step 1 is finding lands, right? Maybe then you can start thinking. If you find, for example, a red source, you could go, you know, Blood Moon, or if you find a red source, you can block Script Sprites on the Sarah Angel, and then after that, play uh, a Lightning Bolt on the Sarah, for example. There's the attack with the 4-4. Four, four. He's on 8 already. And he is going to chump here. Yeah, 
So it's a goner. And again, you know, even if Nathan has a giant growth, he could play a giant growth on the uh, script sprites, but then in response, Oliver could say, okay, with the mace, I'm taking the uh, Sarah Angel out of combat. So it's really tough. Okay, finally finding red mana in the form of a Taiga. What are we going to see? Tapping four. Okay, are we finally going to see an Urnum? Urnum Jin. I mean, oh, he needed this card so much sooner in the game. I kind of feel for him not finding the Lance. There's a counter spell. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what these control players do. Countering away, having the book, having the bigger creature. It's all good. There's the other, there's the attack. Nate going down to four. There's another Sarah Angel hitting the board. Untapping, upkeep and draw. Probably the last turn here for Nate in game one. Oh, look at that hand full of red sources. Very, very unfortunate, but it can happen, of course. That's also part of magic. And now both players are going to shuffle up and we will catch back up with them in game uh, number two. Game uh, number two here, uh, ready to start. Nathan, of course, on the play after losing that first game. Hopefully he can find the right mana this time. Looks like both players are keeping their seven. And yeah, Nathan, of course, being uh, very unfortunate, not finding any, uh, any red sources until the end of the game. And then uh, his hand, of course, was full of chain lightnings and curd apes. There's a Taiga. Oh, no Taiga curd ape. Too bad. I was really hoping for Taiga curd ape. Instead, it's Taiga into Lana Relves. There we see an island by Oliver or not taking it back. <laughs> having, having second thoughts. Going... Uh, Oh, again, a Soul Ring turn one. That is unfortunate for Nathan here. That is very unfortunate. Oliver had that turn one Soul Ring in game one and now in game two again. It's great for Oliver, of course, but very unfortunate for Nathan. I wonder if uh, Nathan boarded in some more Artifact Hate. That would be very handy right now to just take care of that Soul Ring. Tapping Taiga. Okay, there's a Scripps Sprites. Tapping Lana for a green. Oh, look at that. There we see the artifact hate. Scavenger folk, 1-1 one, one creature from the dark. One green, tap and sack, destroy target artifact. Very cool art. I can tell you the hand is not his, for example. And also I like the flavor text, really cool card. But um, let's have a look at Oliver, what he's doing. He's playing a second island or first island, but the second blue. Oh, look at this. Wow, this fireball, two for one. Taking care of that scavenger folk is the most important target here. Making sure that his uh, soul ring survives. Yeah, bad news for Oliver here. It's so like I said in the deck deck, Oliver's deck is really equipped to play against these creature heavy decks. Two fireballs, wrath of gods, mazes of if, swords to plowshares, you name it, he's got it. He would see a beautiful elf here, two one first striker. Yeah, just a beautiful card. Art by Anson Medix, the Elfish Archer. Let's see what Oliver can do. Tapping four, there's a Gem de Tome. Okay, at least no answers to the creature, so that means he could hit for five here. Okay, there's a green. He needs like an explosive turn right now. He's gonna animate. Go, Nathan. Hit him for five. And I'm always kind of rooting for the player that's behind, by the way. So it's not personal, Oliver, but it's just like I'm hoping to see a game three. There's the attack, uh, Oliver, now on 14. But I mean, that Soul Ring is so good. He's got enough mana now to cast a Mahamoti. And we saw him do that in game one, Mahamoti turn four, and that was devastating for Nathan. But it looks like he's... Uh in a more difficult position, you're really taking his time, so it's not as cut and dry as it was in game one. Tapping, no, untapping again. Yeah, really kind of uh, in the tank here, not quite sure what he wants to do. Maybe he wants to keep two blue open for counter magic. Oh, he's just gonna draw a card. Okay, that's actually kind of good news if you're in Nathan's position. Passing the turn here, oh, interesting. There's another Taiga. If he can hit him again for five, it would drop to nine. Now remember, he is playing with Berserks and Giant Groves, but that's going to be really risky 
Also looking at the fact that Oliver has two blue open, but then again, this is uh, Nathan has the type of deck where you have to take the risks, right? You you got to play this deck fearless. I feel attack for five, no giant groves, no berserks, but a a good hit nonetheless. Oliver on nine, but I mean, if if Oliver could just pick up one wrath, that would help him immensely. Of course, it wouldn't hit the the factory, but he would take care of two more creatures. Kind of get the pressure off. Take two damage instead of five. That's a huge difference. Even one mace would help here. Tapping two. Okay, COP red. Yeah. Okay, that's useful. In response, a lightning bolt makes sense. Oh, <laughs> gonna put him on six. Are we gonna see a are we gonna see a counter spell though? Could consider countering this. Ooh, there's a blue elemental blast. So now we really see, see those sideboard cards shine in the deck of Oliver. Do we see a red elemental blast on the side of Nate? No, we're not. Ay, 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 that's a little unfortunate. On the other hand, though, I mean, he could just swing in for five again. Animating. Yeah, exactly. Just keep doing what you're doing. That would, this would be the third successful hit of five, and it is successful. Wow. Oliver on four right now. He's on four. Nathan's so close. Second main. Nope. Passing the turn. Three cards in hand. I kind of feel like Nathan is missing that giant grove. Missing that berserk. But Oliver on four. So he's very close. Oliver still looking. Digging further. Which is again a good sign for Nate. Just not finding anything, which, which surprises me because he's drawn, what, three cards off that GM they told him? That's it, picking up the cards. Okay, so Nathan winning game number two here. And that, you know, like I said, it makes me happy because I always enjoy uh, matches that go all the way to the third game. So great, great result here. Both players going to shuffle up and then we're going to start, uh, start with the decisive game number three. 1-1, one, one. game number three, and we see Oliver here on the play, starting with the plateau. This is the match for all the marbles. The winner here will also be the winner of the uh, X Points Tournament 38. And the plateau here for Oliver, passing the turn to Nate. Ooh, look at that Curd Ape, mounting into Curd Ape. Hopefully for him, he's got a forest next turn, because then he's got a 2-3 creature instead of a 1-1. One, one. But I will wait and see. It's first up to Oliver, of course. Okay, there's a mace. That's good news. That means he's probably not going to take uh, early damage. Nate here untapping. And let's see what he can do. Can he find a forest? Can he put some more pressure on the board? Yep, there's the forest. So Curdape is a 2-3. There's the attack. Going to send the Curdape back, of course, with the mace. Let's see what Nate can do. Tapping two more. And okay, there's an Argovian Pixies. So as expected, of course, uh, Nathan being the person that just tries to play, play out a lot of creatures really quickly. And then it's up to Oliver to answer the threats. And later in the game, of course, he's going to find his uh, Sarah Angels and Mahamotis, probably. There's a second plateau, I believe. And this time, uh, Oliver not finding that early soul ring, which, of course, is good news for Nathan. And the thing is with Maze, Maze is a great card, but it does take a land drop, of course, right? Because it's a land, so it does slow you down. So that's always something to kind of, you know, keep in mind. Okay, here we see a Felwer Stone. That's kind of ramping him up, compensating for that uh, land loss earlier. So the Felwer here by Oliver and then the past turn. So uh, Nate can at least deal two points of damage here. There's that City of Brass now, and now the Felwer Stone can make any color of mana. There's the attack. Doesn't really matter what he sends back. Yeah, probably goes for the Argovian Pixies because it's got the... Lowest toughness. So two damage here. Oliver dropping to 18. There we see Nate tapping two more. Okay, there's an Argovian Pixies. And there's a Scavenger Folk. Yeah, this is just really good for Nate. Just putting more pressure on the board. 
try to just, you know, turn those creatures sideways. I really like the scavenger folk here. Oh, earthquake! Ho, ho, ho! This is problematic for Nathan. Wow, that was a great earthquake. And he's, and he's got the maze to deal with the Kurt Ape, so this is really good. An earthquake for one, so extremely effective against the board of Nate. And there we see a, a Mishra's factory. There's the attack. Sending back the ape. Tapping four. Are we going to see an Urnum here? Going to take a damage from his own city. Yep, Urnum Jin, 4-5 powerhouse from Arabian Nights. And uh, during your upkeep, you have to give a creature of the opponent forest walk. But in this case, it's not a big deal. Oh, here we see the perfect answer from Oliver. Second, Maze of If. And also a COP red. Yeah, Oliver really kind of digging in, building a pillow fort. It's going to be super difficult for Nate. Now, do remember Nate is playing with, uh, with Blood Moons. We haven't seen them the entire match, but if he can find them, look at that. He is going to animate and just uh, probably attack with everything. It's probably going to lead to nowhere. He can mace the factory and the Urnum and uh, exactly use the COP against the Kurt Ape. So that's zero points of damage for Oliver after this attack by Nate. And I, you know, I think if, if Nate can find a Blood Moon, yes, he takes out his own uh, factory, but also he takes out the two mazes of if on the side of uh, Oliver. And now Oliver's staring at his hand. Both players on 17, by the way. And of course, the longer the game takes, the better it is for Oliver being the control player. There's a third card for Nate. Let's see what he found. Is it going to be useful? It's going to animate and then attack again. I mean, I like it that he keeps attacking. Okay, here we see a Divine Offering taking care... Oh, a Disenchant, actually. Taking care here of the uh, Mishra's Factory. Sending back both creatures. And I mean, there's something to be said that you're using your disenchant because you know with the Divine Offering, you're not going to gain any life from destroying the factory. On the other hand, the disenchant, of course, can be used later ex against, for example, a Blood Moon. Then again, Oliver hasn't seen a Blood Moon the entire match. And rem remember, the players don't know each other's deck lists. So it kind of, yeah, you know, in a, in a way made sense to play this disenchant instead of the Divine Offering. And now also the Gem Day Tome for, uh, for Oliver, so even more control for him. And I think if you're Nate, you kind of can see the writing on the wall. This is going to be really tough. Passing, just three cards in hand. Probably burn there. That's not going to work against the COP Red. I wonder if there's a Tranquility in there on the side of, uh, of Nate. I mean, it's just tough when you have one circle of protection cutting off half of your deck, you know. And now we see Oliver doing what he loves to do, drawing extra cards with the book, kind of controlling the game, passing the turn, not really doing anything, which is fine. He doesn't have to. There's another city. And I mean, also for Oliver, he knows, for example, if he has a Mamoti in hand, right, he could play it out. But then he taps out completely, which would be quite stupid, because then Nate can just play out all his burn. Here we see a Scavenger Folk, which is quite good because it can take out the book. So maybe if you're Oliver, you're now thinking about potentially countering it. First going to draw a card, of course, in response to the cast. Oh, no, doing that on end step, okay. Because he could also do it in response to the cast, and if he finds a... Counterspell, play the Counterspell. There's a Soul Ring into another Felver Stone. So lots of mana, which is actually good because you need to keep mana open for your COP Red. And of course, you also want to draw cards with a Gem Detome. So you need a lot of mana. Ooh, it looks like he is going to cast something. Is he going to tap out? I mean, he's on 17. Okay, there's a fireball. Yeah, just a fireball for one on the... Uh... Oh, look at that. Yeah, there's a giant growth. So the scavenger folk is not going to die today. Yeah, the scavenger folk is quite important here. 
I think if you're Oliver, you're like, oh, I should have thought about this. Because he could have waited. Well, he couldn't have waited another turn because then he could, uh, uh, Nate could use the scavenger folk. But it's, t it's tough, right? Because if you tap out, then you can no longer use your COP red. It's difficult. Here we see uh, Nate probably using the scavenger folk to take care of the book. Ooh, he's going to draw a card in response. Now it's going to be interesting. Are there chain lightnings in that hand of Nate or there lightning bolts in that hand? Yeah, there we see the first lightning bolt. Going to drop to 14. If it's just the one, it's not too bad for, uh, for Oliver. Yeah, just the one. So a little opening given and Nate is taking it, dealing three points, but it's not enough. He's still really high on 14. Yeah, those mazes are really uh, a problem. I feel here for, uh, for Nate. And I mean, Oliver has enough mana here to cast a Mahamoti and keep counter magic up and actually also keep uh, a mana open for the COP red. So I wonder if he's gonna play it. Oh, he's gonna play a recall. Yeah, that's good. Recall, such a good card in these control decks. I uh, can probably wants to get back, gonna go for two cards, I believe. Probably gonna get back the uh, GM Daytona. And then I wonder what other card he's gonna get back. Ooh, Swords of Plowshares going. Yeah, going for an Earthquake and for a Gem Day Tome. Oh, man, that is so good. That is so good. He can now just pass turn and then play in a big Earthquake next turn. Looks like he still wants to do something, though. Going to play an Ivory Tower. I believe he's got, what, three, four cards in hand? So Ivory Tower not relevant yet. But again, it's looking really bad for Nate. I guess the only good news, well, he can prevent the damage from the Earthquake, of course, with his own COP red. Oh, man, that's going to be disgusting. Disgustingly good, that is, for Oliver. Yeah, Nate just passing the turn, unable to do anything here. I think we're going to see an Earthquake. And now the question is, how big are you going to make the Earthquake? So could go for an Earthquake for 5, kill everything on the board, prevent the damage with his COP red. There we go, yep, Earthquake for 5. Wow, this is so good for Oliver. The Earthquake in this Game 3 has been the all-star for him. It did so much work early in the game, and now we're in mid-game. It's back thanks to Recall doing a lot of work again. Five damage for Nate. He will drop to 12, and he loses both his creatures. Maybe he's considering playing a Giant Growth on, for example, to earn him, to save the earn him. But he, even if he does that, it, it, it's not a great deal. because He's still staring down a double maze. It's a really tough moment here for Nate, and it's looking really, really good for Oliver. Yeah, it looks like he is going to play out the Giant Grove here. Tapping a green, at least I assume. it's Yeah, it's a Giant Grove, so it's going to survive. Five points of damage here for Nate. Ay, 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 that is so tough. That is so tough. And I think, I think the, even the tougher thing here is the fact that Oliver is taking zero points of damage. Because, I mean, that's always the silver lining when you're an aggro deck and you're like, okay, my opponent kills, what, three of my creatures, two of my creatures with an Earthquake. At least he's also damaging himself, but that's not the case. We do see a, a factory here on the side of Nate, but he needs a third creature to actually even deal a little bit of damage because of that double maze on the side of Oliver. Let's uh, see what Oliver can do here. Probably going to cast the yeah, cast Jamde Tome again here. Probably pass turn and draw extra cards on end step of Nate. Exactly passing the turn. Untap, upkeep, or draw. Gonna tap four. Okay, another earn him. Okay, so slowly but surely being able to put a little bit of pressure on the board. Maybe next turn he can attack with three creatures. Here we see uh, Oliver using the book on end step, I assume. Exactly. Gonna now go to untap, upkeep, and draw. There's another plateau. Tapping, another tower. 
We had a tower not going to do much passing the turn. I wonder if he's got like, if he's going to cast like a divine offering or something or sort to plowshares. Let's see, Nate here, of course, attacking with his three creatures, hoping to get some damage in. There we see the double maze taking care of the Urnums. And then, yeah, there we see that divine offering we saw earlier in the game. Taking care of the uh, Mishra's factory here of Nate. Yeah, so much control. And of course, it's a final, so if you're Nate, you want to finish it. You want to try to find some way of getting some damage through, but I think you kind of know this is really a, a losing battle here. Yeah, there we see the Sarah Angel. I mean, the combination of and having two mazes and having Jam De Tome and having tons of mana and a COP Red on top of that. I mean, come on. So Sarah Angel being cast here by Oliver. He's also going to draw a card in his own main, it seems. Or not. No, he did it on the end step of, of Nate. Nate actually just uh, drew a card past a turn, not finding anything useful. It's going to drop to eight. Wow, that is, that is, that is tough. Another Jam Day Tome. Drawing for turn. Tapping a green. Okay, there's a script sprite. At least it can jump block the uh, Sarah Angel. Giving him an extra turn. There's the end step uh, draw card with the tome. It looks like he's going to go for another draw. And now if Nate has two bolts, ah, then again, he still has a blue open. And I guess if you've got two bolts, you're going to point them at the Sarah Angel. Never mind. Anyway, there's the attack with the Sarah Angel. There's the... I guess the chump or not. Yeah, he's gonna... Chump block. Ooh, and he's gonna play a lightning bolt. Okay. There we see a blue elemental blast, though. There we see a red elemental blast. So the angel is a goner. Okay, that's, that's a little bit, a little bit of light... In the world of Nate, taking care of that Sarah Angel. And okay, there's a Chaos Orb. And there's the pass turn, probably. But still, if you're Nate, you're not too concerned. I mean, you've got the books, you're drawing so many more cards. I mean, if you're Oliver, you've got the two books, you're drawing so many more cards. And that's for Nathan, really, really tough. Passing the turn, he then on end step, of course, Oliver's gonna draw. Draw some extra cards. Wow, look at that. Living the life of luxury. Drawing two extra cards here on the end step of Nate. Now drawing a card for turn. That's three cards. It's like an ancestral recall here. Three cards in hand. And his books are untapped again. That is brutal. Gonna pass the turn. Nate drawing a card for turn. Finding a Mox Ruby. Two cards in hand, passing the turn. Then of course, end step, double use of the books, drawing two. Wow, wow, wow. Then he's gonna draw another card for turn. Ooh, now he's gonna gain life from the ivory towers. Yeah, ivory towers are active now. Oh, it only gets worse here for Nate. There's the pass. Tapping four, okay, another Urnum. It is nice to see all those Ernies, but they're not going to do much. Oliver again drawing two extra cards. I mean, I guess next turn he can try to swing in for three, try to get some damage in, but I'm sure Oliver has answers. And I think Oliver for getting here to gain the life from the double tower. Okay, it looks like he's putting the card back now, gaining the life now. Yeah, that makes sense. And then drawing for turn. So 24, then drawing for turn. Exactly. Yeah, I think like this double ivory tower is really the nail in the coffin. Oh, there we see uh, an earthquake for eight, I assume. Four, five, six, seven, and eight, and nine. Is it going to do it for nine? 
I mean, I don't think there's really life gain. Gonna go for eight, and that's it. Winning here the X Points Tournament 38 with his blue white control deck. Well, actually, powered by red. You can see how good red is for Oliver here. Uh, Oliver, congratulations. Here we can see your winning deck. And uh, like I said in the deck decks, what I like about your deck is that you're also playing with like the big cool creatures. You're playing Sarah Angel, you're playing Mammoth Jin. I like that, you know, instead of going full control. I also think it's very clever that you put a little bit of red in there. And yeah, this was, your deck is really made for this type of matchup, right? So it doesn't really surprise me that you win it here, but still what an accomplishment, of course, winning the entire monthly. Uh, I'm sure you've had some bad matchups as well in this in this event. So congratulations, winning it here. And um, like I also said in the introduction, if you enjoy uh, X Points, you can join them on Facebook. There's a link to their Facebook group in the description below where you can find all the information. Uh, before you go, please take a moment to like, comment, and share this video on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. YouTube love that stuff. So if you have a moment, please do that. And um, also, like I mentioned earlier in this video, I have my own Patreon page, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron of the show and help me to continue making these movies for you guys. So check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for all the information. And talking about uh, the patrons, let's go to the end scroll and have a look at the fantastic, amazing, wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Early in the morning. Way day up she rises, way day up she rises, way day up she rises early in the morning. Put him in the long boat until he's sober, put him in the long boat until he's sober, put him in the long boat until he's sober. Thank you to Samba Kazik!